Hey guys, what's going on? So this is uh, Juan Rojas again. I'm the owner uh, broker of JPR International Real Estate. So today I have a good friend of mine, Carlos Garcia, who is the CEO of uh, GAR Capital, GAR Capital. And so he's basically a day trader. He trades stocks for a living and he's been doing it uh, for the last five years? Uh, six years, it'll be six years in October. Six years in October, okay. so. Mm -hmm. The reason I, I thought it'd be fun and interesting and, and actually probably very uh, invaluable to have a conversation with Carlos is that uh, number one, he makes a living from trading stocks, right? I've yes. known Carlos for 20 years, years. maybe, if not more. Uh, I would say, well, I'm 34 now. I've known him probably since I was like seven years old. So, <laughs> so a good time. I would say about a good 27 years. A good while. A good while. A good while. And so... Uh, so I figured I'd ask Carlos, you know, a bunch of questions about the stock market today. Um, full disclosure, I'm not a financial analyst. I don't know if you are a financial analyst, like advisor. I used to be. I used okay. to be. Uh, I used to be a licensed advisor in the state of Texas. Okay. Obviously, since I moved in 2012, I'm no longer a uh, certified financial uh, uh, analyst or a financial advisor. Just want to get that out there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. But I think by uh, you know tuning in and listening to you know to this conversation, you you should get some ideas as to maybe you know having a context as, as to where the, the stock market is, where it might mm -hmm. go, what it might do, what you might want to do uh, with your own portfolio, etc. So anyway, Carlos, so thanks so much for having a conversation with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for awesome. having me on. I'm excited to be here. Cool, let's do it. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your, your story? Uh, a little bit of my background. Okay, well, uh, born in Miami, Florida, and uh, didn't, couldn't say when I got, when I was young, I wanted to be in the stock market or financial market. I, my first kind of dream I wanted to be was an astronaut, funny enough. And that dream was ended pretty much a year later as a kid. But uh, growing up, I always was interested in kind of how the stock market worked. Only until I was around 18 years old, I bought my first stock, which was McDonald's, right around $45 a share. I sold it for $60 a share. I really only had three shares at the time, not making the world on fire, but it was my first real trade. It was on E-Trade, and this was back in 2004. So that's a while back. Uh, but getting into the market and understanding the intricacies of how it works was just fascinating to me. Uh, when I went to college, and I'm a dropout, I started as a history major. I was really into history and reading, and then just got into finance, and I started noticing that in college, they really don't teach you the things that I do on a daily basis in regards to uh, reading the market, reading the tape, as we call it, uh, the movement of stocks, companies, all that good stuff. And it really is kind of like, you know, how do you learn to ride a bicycle? You can't really read a book on riding a bicycle. You're just going to have to get on. You're going to fall down. You're going to scrape your knee. It's usually the case. Uh, but I mean, background wise, great support from family, uh, understanding the crazy dream I've had years in advance and, uh, just loving what you do. That's really what the key is loving. What I, I do this, wake up at four in the morning, every morning to read the market and just enjoying it every single day. It's, it's work, but when it's a passion, it doesn't feel like work. Right. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I, I think that's actually probably, I think that's like my bio on Instagram. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It made me disagree. It have to be. You have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. So, so listen again. I'm not a stock trader. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm biased, you know, towards real estate. But um, I, I should say that I'm biased towards real estate because I understand it. Right. Yes. I think it's. Uh, I don't know if you would agree. If you you should trade stocks, if you understand what you're doing. Otherwise, you know, you're basically gambling. What What is just like just like anything else? Um, you tend to do great at something you understand. Uh, let's say if you, you know, understand bowling or understand poker and that's a hobby, right? You understand it. You tend to excel at things you understand very well. Inversely me, I know nothing about real estate. Granted, I have no real estate investments. I mean, all I have is real estate crowdfunding with Fundrise, for example. I have a little slice of my portfolio there. I mean, I leave it there. I don't touch it uh, with stocks. Again, I have some, an expertise on that. So again, most of my portfolio is in stocks. And since I know what I'm doing and I enjoy it, you know, it kind of works hand in hand. So I know a lot of real estate investors and a lot of real estate uh, brokers as well that say the same thing. Like, I have no idea on stocks, Carlos. I prefer real estate. And I say, I I'm in the same boat, just opposite of you. But I think real estate and stocks are kind of in the same basket. They're both assets. 
at the end of the day. And you just pick out what you excel at. There's also traders who are commodity traders, just like foreign exchange traders and stock traders. For example, I'm a stock options trader, not a stock trader. Uh, I'm a stock investor, but stock options are pieces of paper based on the stock movement. To me, that's just an easier vehicle to day trade than actual physical stocks and owning the actual equity per se. Okay. So, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of it's information a lot. It's a lot of for, information. for yes. like a, you know, for a newbie like Regular me person. or maybe a lot of newbies that may be watching this. So, um, so a lot, you know, I think a lot of people think, okay, the stock market is risky, right? Yes. What would you tell somebody like that? Well, I'd say to everybody, without risk, there is no reward. But again, you have to take calculated risk. I can equate that to getting up in the morning, getting in your car and going to work. There's a risk. You can get hit in your car. You can get a car accident. Now, is it a low risk? Depends where you drive. 995, nine in the morning could happen, right? Uh, there's a risk in marrying the wrong person. There's a risk in having a child when you're too young. There's a risk in changing jobs. I mean, without risk, guys, I mean, Jeff Bezos wouldn't have created Amazon. Uh, Bill Gates wouldn't have created Microsoft. These big companies wouldn't have been started without that kind of risk. Take calculated risk. If not, it would be gambling. But just like anything else, don't ever put money in something, guys, that you do not understand. And always be around people who have the heart of a teacher. That's someone who could teach you something, not just sell you something. If they can really show you the intricacies of something before you invest in, those are the people you want to be around with. And I think Juan can attest to that. You know, when you're a broker and you talk to individuals, you're just walking them through everything. So they feel comfortable and understand, ah, I'm putting my funds into something that I can understand. And it makes the risk side on, your, on yourself a little, little uh, down, a little, a little better off for you. But if you just get somebody who tells you, oh, you should just do it because that doesn't really set your mind at ease. So again, risk is everywhere in life, guys. That's the best thing I say. But calculated risk is what sets you apart and sets you apart to building wealth down the line. So basically, so, so what I'm taking away from this is, is take, is make calculated decisions, right? Calculated mm -hmm. risks, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's been a lot of craziness in the stock market, right? In the last, yeah. I don't know, four, six, eight weeks, right? It's been up, yeah. down, crashed, and then it came back up. And then I think just yesterday, as of the recording of this video, uh, like for the first time ever, oil was negative. Yeah, what, the contracts, yes. Right. What, which I think for most people, that's, it's, it's like a headline, but it might as well be Chinese because, you know, sometimes the headline, um, like I, I see this a lot, right? Like it just in the news, the headlines about real estate and the stock market and the headline is meant to be like attention grabbing. But if you sure. don't understand the context of what happened there, right, then it could either be the you know, horrible, like panic inducing, or it could be like, it's just a blip, right? So sure. what, I mean, what, what would you tell to like the average person who maybe may not have stocks about what's going on in the stock market like in the last four, six, eight weeks? Well, what you're having, uh, I think, uh, I don't need to be here to explain that, you know, the coronavirus and has changed a lot of things, as we know, has changed the economy uh, for the worse, let's be honest. You know, people are not working. We understand that. And the stock market is really just companies, uh, prices of companies and valuations. And individuals who are probably watching this video probably have a 401k or an IRA. So they are invested in the stock market some way or another. So I just tell people the same thing. When you are investing in the stock market, the US stock market, you're really literally betting on America. If you think the United States civilization and economy will end, will literally end, then you should sell your stocks. And I would agree, then I would understand that you think we're going back to the Bronze Age. We're going to go on the street and throw rocks at each other for food. Fine. Because if you think the world's going to end, then your shares in Apple or Microsoft are kind of meaningless because the world's over. But we as a country have gone through World War I, World War II, the Great Depression, Vietnam War, Watergate, 9-11, 87 crash, 2000 crash.com, 2008 mortgage meltdown, and now this. And we've gotten stronger as a country because of it. It doesn't last forever. It just feels like forever. It's all perception. But usually what happens is what we have individuals, we're very emotional. And then when it comes to money, it hits individuals in a different way. If you have a very resentful view on money, usually you tend to get fearful of money. And there's other individuals who see money as a tool, not to worship money, but as a tool, like, it's like worshiping a hammer. It doesn't make sense. Money, honestly, just really brings you 
more time to do what you really love. So when you get your money right, that's when you can start doing the, ho- the hobbies and the stuff you love, spending time with your loved ones. So my point is that in regards to the market, how it changes, it's always going to fluctuate because it really is based on emotion, humans, and machines. So up, down, left, right, whatever, but you're betting on America that's going to keep growing. Now, will we get a blip on the radar? Of course. Nothing just goes straight up. Nothing in life does. It doesn't work that way. So if you're an individual today looking at your retirement account and you're down 30%, would you sell your, your portfolio or what have you? I asked the individual, if you were up 30%, would you sell? And nine times out of 10, I'd, they would say no. And I said, well, what's different? What's changed? Well, I'm up 30%. And I go, and what difference does it make if you're not going to retire tomorrow? If you were going to retire in the next 10 years, I would say you need to get a reallocated in your portfolio to a little more safe investments. If you're not retiring for at least 10 years, there is nothing to, to worry about because we have bounced within two years after every recession. That has happened every time. There's no 10-year period in the United States history that the S&P 500 has lost money in a 10-year period. Five-year period, yes. 10-year period, no. 20 period has never happened. Never. So again, if you're looking forward thinking, not emotional today, impulsing, impulsive uh, behavior, or I don't know, I'm, I'm scared. Never invest scared. Uh, always look down the future. And, you know, kind of the saying goes, you know, don't make promises when you're happy. Don't make decisions when you're upset or fearful, right? Same thing with your portfolio. It is your money and it has to work for you. If you do not need the money today and you're investing in the stock market, nothing has changed at all. You continue what you're doing. If it comes to the point that you're laid off, that's understandable. It's an emergency. You need to put food on the table, lights on. I understand. But other than that, nothing should change. These day-to-day occurrences in the market does not affect you at all if you're a long-term investor. It should not change one thing of your plan. It's not, there's no point of having a plan if you keep changing it every day. That's what I tell people. Just mm-hmm. stay the course and your future self will thank you because a lot of times you'll have individuals saying, oh, why didn't I buy more when it was down, right? Or why didn't I sell when it was higher? You can never time it. You just have to look forward and be like, hey, is Microsoft going to be a company in 10 years? Is Coca-Cola going to be around in 10 years? Is Clorox going to be around in 10 years? More, more than likely they are going to be. That's the, that's the companies that you want to be in and understand. So uh, to that question, those kind of stock market fluctuations and what we're having today, again, they're attention grabbing. They're meant to scare you. And I understand Wall Street and the markets can be very intimidating. But again, stick to the names that you know. You know where do you pump gas? Uh, let's say Exxon. What kind of soda do you like? Coca-Cola. What do you like to eat? Let's say you like McDonald's for breakfast or Starbucks for coffee. Uh, who's your uh, wireless provider, Verizon or AT&T, for example? Stick to the companies that you know, that you understand. So you have kind of a, a semblance of know what you're investing in. That's an easier route to go by than just throwing your hands up and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just do this. Because that doesn't work. So when you're talking about investing, really, you're talking about long-term investing. Like your, yes. your perception is always long term, not, mm-hmm. you know, what can I buy today that I can sell, you know, by Thursday and make yes. a gazillion dollars. Yes. Right? That would be trading. That would be trading. Yes. Okay. Okay. By the way, when did you get into trading? Trading. Uh, we opened our business in 2014. That's when I got into trading, but okay. I've been an investor before that. You're an investor before. So basically. Yeah. Just- and I'm still an investor today. Yeah. I still have my stock portfolio. And uh, I've bought stocks even at that low. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into jargon and confuse people, but uh, right around uh, end of February, mid-March, we hit the lows of the market. And I was buying companies with great balance sheets that have great cash flow that you know are going to be around for a while. For example, Apple, United Healthcare, Microsoft, those kind of companies that you know will be around even in a downturn. Colgate Palmolive is another one. JP Morgan Chase, the bank. They're not going to go away. They're going to be around for a while. Uh, just be careful with speculative names. Those tips you get from your friends, this is going to skyrocket, or those newsletters you get. Think and see the companies that you know are going to be around. CVS Pharmacy, Costco. You know, that's why I say, where do you shop? Those are kind of the names you should stay with. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, there's, there's just, uh, you know, there's probably so many questions in people's minds. So yep. let me ask you this. Do, um, let's say simple question, 2020, 2030, in your opinion, mm-hmm. do you expect the stock market to be higher in 2030 than it is in 2020? Lower, flat, the same? What do you think? Higher, higher without a doubt. 
high without a doubt, without a shred of doubt. I, I yes. can't guarantee anything in life, but I, without cert, without any uncertainty, we will be higher in 2030. And and that's what I think. I guess that's you know that's what I'm what I'm you know trying to get to is that obviously nothing is guaranteed, but it's it's almost like a like a probability game, right? Is it more mm-hmm. more likely to be higher or more likely to be lower, right? Sure. And chances are it's probably going to be higher, right? Like when I talk to people about you know their their houses, right? Is your house likely going to be worth more today, 2020, or in 2030? Well, probably in 2030, right? I mean, of course. Barring like you know a triple pandemic shows up in like 2019, right? And then like aliens come, and then like it's just like a meteorite. You know, and then on. your home value would be the last thing on your mind, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Basically, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, let me ask you: What are some of the like the most common mistakes that you've seen people make? Uh, in regards to investing, uh, is not doing their homework. Okay. Not treating it like it's it's your money. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have an advisor, then I understand, but you still want to be responsible for your money. It is yours. Take ownership. Know what you're investing in. And number two, I would say the biggest one is emotions. Being emotional with these headlines that'll flash in your face, telling you to get scared or to be more greedy if we're up. Uh, at the end of the day, you're in control of you. Uh, human emotion and behavior can really change when it comes to money. I mean, that's, it touches that kind of small part of your, your being. Like, I, I worked hard for this. I work, I work hard for this. I'm just going to give it away to somebody, you know, like kind of using cash in the store. You're like, ah, I don't want to use cash. That's why. Using card is just less damaging to the ego in a sense. Uh, But that's just the reality. I mean, the number one thing is not doing your homework. Know what you're investing in, guys. You know, don't take my word for it or anyone else's word. Do your own homework. You know, if I say a stock or a couple of names that I like, that may be good for me, but not be good for you. So you would don't take tips from someone in a magazine or a TV show because everyone is different. Everyone has different risk tolerances. Some people are more cowboys. They're like, I'm all in. I don't care. I can always make money. If you're 18 years old, you could take all the risk in the world. You have your whole life to make money, right? With the job. But if you're 56, you're 66 and you're retiring, you don't have a lot of time with your money. You want to be in wealth preservation, not wealth accumulation. So a lot of people have it kind of backwards where some people are very young and they worked very hard over time, two jobs. They're very preservation mentality. And then you have some older gentlemen or older individuals who are like, I'm all in on my retirement. Let's go, let's do it. And then you're like, social security is not going to save you. You know, you got to think ahead. That's really the biggest thing I see as a mistake is that the one size uh, fits all mentality. It doesn't work that way. Everyone is different. Everyone is truly different in regards to money, whether it's spending, whether it's investing, whether it's trading, if you trade anything you could think of, there's always a customized plan for individuals. That's why I try to stay away from that, oh, this is good for you. We, well, I don't know you yet. Let me let's go over some of your uh, some of about you, your family, your net worth. If you know w- what exactly are you looking for, you know people just throw numbers out there. Oh, I can grow my money this much and just get a mutual fund, and it's a lot of jargon and it confuses people. But the main thing is to think about it: is that I need to do the research. I need to do some homework too. I'm not going to put my money in something that I don't understand. That's really the reiteration I want to give here. Get educated. Yes, get educated. Right. It doesn't have to be all in, but a little, a little something. Okay. Know what you're getting into. Yeah, understand. Uh, and I think um, you have a you have a course, right? You have a course on yes, trading stocks. Yes, I had a an, uh, an investor seminar. I actually talked about the uh, the pandemic, COVID nineteen, and it, I was an investment seminar. It was free on YouTube. Uh, GAR Capital is the uh, YouTube channel, and I answered questions and we talked about everything from your personal finance, where would you be if you lost your job? If you, you know, if you're not working, you know, or if you are working, what would you do with your investments? What to look for? And this was, I think about four weeks ago. And I even publicly stated at these levels, I am buying stocks and I said it out there and we have rose since then. Uh, but again, if you are buying stocks now, for example, you're literally betting on the United States recovering from this madness. Do you think the United States as a country, as an economy can bounce from this? Are we still the best country economically on planet Earth? I say so, and I think we can. And if you don't think so, okay, that's fine. But keep in mind, the money you have in your pocket is still U.S. dollars. So unless you plan to change it to yen or to euro, to euros, 
you're still you're living in the United States. So I would recommend to still bet on this country that's still growing, that's still getting better. Just like anything else in life, is there are some bad times, sure. And, you know, I, I hate to just monetize the COVID-19 virus because it's a health problem. It's a health crisis. You know, I hope everyone stays safe, social distancing. But since this is a question about money, we know the drill. And uh, this will pass. This will pass. It just feels that this will never end. But I remember 9-11. We were all scared, too. And uh, that passed as well. So let me ask you, uh, let me ask you another question because I, you know, sure. like me, me being a real estate. So I, I like on a daily basis, we deal with people that are, I was just telling somebody yesterday. And um, I mean, we have clients that are multimillionaires, right? And then we have clients who, um, like, I mean, I, I'm thinking of somebody right now who, you know, who, who doesn't have a job, uh, recently got separated, right? From, you know, from her spouse. Um, rent hasn't been paid for April. And so they're like, I mean, on two opposite sides of the spectrum, right? Sure. And, and I can feel, you know, I, I've, I understand both sides of the situation, right? But I think there's, from my perspective, there's a few things that are like just, it's a common thread for everybody, right? Like everyone wants to try to be in shape, right? Their health, their relationships, but also their money, the money situation. Mm-hmm. And you, like you said, there's there are some people who are, more aggressive some people that are more fearful and i think a lot of it i mean this is probably a whole other you know interview and conversation like Psych- psychological thing yes but it's a lot of, you know it's a lot it's a lot of psychology a lot of you know emotional stuff um ideas that either we were uh, that we received from our parents or from our environment right when we were growing up or the people that we were around or maybe you know our parents either were very frugal or or they were you know, already like spenders, right? Um, yeah. You know, yeah, brand yeah. people or, you know, the opposite, you know, Dollar Tree, everything was, you know, like no brand, generic brand. So mm-hmm. I, I think it affects people differently, but what are some things that you think from your perspective that, that people can um, that like learn to, to understand about money so that they're not so emotional? about it well, so that they're not I, so controlled because sorry to interrupt you but you know sometimes no. I've, i found that 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 people are so uh worried about money which is a real thing but yes. but it's almost like the money controls them and i've seen this by the way with people that are that have very little bits of money like like a little bit of money and a lot of money and it's almost like the money has control over them right so what has been your experience well, I, I've been on both sides of that. Um, I remember, well, part of the, the conversation you're saying here, like I said, money is just a tool. At the end of the day, it's just pieces of paper with a picture on it. That's, that's what it is. It's basically what we put value in. There's different people that put value on different things. There's individuals that put value on items like designer clothes and cars. That's what defines them. That makes them feel good. Other individuals put their worth on their family. That defines them or their business or whatever and their friendships with with other people that defines them that's what they put the most value on i always say that what you put attention on is what you get energy from if you put a lot of attention on your family you're going to get that energy back if you put a lot of attention on money you're going to get that energy back um so again I, i've been on both sides i've been at, at 18 years old homeless before i was homeless and i worked my way out of that i lived in a car for about uh three weeks and I had a friend that I stayed at, at his house and I just showered and everything. So I've been to the bottom where I couldn't pay rent. I didn't eat. And what you do is you have to think to yourself, just like the market that we're saying here, this isn't forever. This isn't, this isn't a death sentence. It really is what can you do today to better it tomorrow? So you move on and you start breaking down a plan. And when it comes to money, the people that are fearful and, you know, or greedy or, you know, different words that we could throw, money it really just makes you more what you are. If you're a a giving person, you just become more of a giving person. If you're really that just tight wad and you have a lot of money, that doesn't change. If you're really aggressive and mean, you just become more aggressive and mean. If you are a partier and you have more money, it just gives you more access. So it really, that's all it does. But, you know, money comes and goes. You can't really take it with you. You just give it to, you know, your family at the end. I mean, don't ever chase money. I would say attract money with mindset. I would say every day, the best thing you should say to yourself is, I'm rich every day. And then the mind and your body follows it. 
kind of like saying, I'm in shape every day. Your body, your mind will follow the body. So I always say to people, keep the mindset right, the energy right. Then you will receive what you want. Attention flows to where the energy goes. So every day, even when I was broke, I'm saying, I'm not broke. I'm pre-rich. I'm going <laughs> to be rich. And every day that mantra would come until it happened. And then the more money you got, uh, a little trick I learned from Tony Robbins, who I love Tony Robbins, read his books. What he would do is that he would get $100 in once and keep it in his pocket. And he would pretend that those were hundreds. And he would just count them. And he just had that feeling of money in his mind. And that changed. He's a multimillionaire now, but that changed and, re and, and you know, that pushed himself and his mindset to where he is now because you're already kind of used to that. So your mind was already, oh, I'm already rich. What has changed? Just more zeros at the end of the bank account? That's all it is. It's really just changing the mindset of not being fearful or not being greedy and just understanding that it's just a tool. It really is at the end of the day and it's just paper. But I'm not saying to blow everything, no, but always have the back of your head too that you're already rich in a lot of things that you may not think you're rich in already. Rich in health, rich in love, rich in love with your family, uh, the relationships you have. Okay, maybe that individual who can't pay their rent doesn't have their money right, but their family loves them like crazy. They have, she has great relationships. She's in great health. She has everything going for her. We don't know that rich person, the other side of the spectrum is in poor health. Maybe his relationships with his family is broken. The first thing I would tell people in regards to are struggling with money is to be grateful for what you have now first. Be grateful what you have first and then attract everything else that you want already. Not to get too spiritual, but that's how I do it. <laughs> so, you know, so let me ask you, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, the reason I, I think, you know, I, I like, you know, talking to you is, is that we have a lot in common, right? Mm -hmm. Like in terms of mindset. Um, but what would you tell people that, that say, you know, listen, Carlos, I, I mean, listen, that, that all sounds, you know, great and nice. And, you know, it sounds a little hokey. I mean, come on, you tell me that I'm just going to attract sure. money. You know how many times I've asked my boss for a raise, you know, mm -hmm. You know how many times, like, look, like I have, you know, on my Pinterest, right, on Instagram, I'm seeing all these guys with Ferraris, and here I am, you know, driving, you know, I don't know, a 1982 Corolla. Give me a break, Carlos. What are you talking about? So the, if that person asked me, give me a break, and I would say, okay, the first thing I would ask this person is, what, what defines rich? Give me a number. What, what's rich to you? I would say, okay, what's rich? Is a Ferrari makes you rich? If that's the case, you don't know if that guy has a rental. You don't know that. Totally. That, that, that could be a rental. And for all you know, that stunting on the gram doesn't mean anything. That doesn't change who you are. I mean, seeing a Ferrari online doesn't, doesn't do anything. If, okay, maybe it motivates you. Okay, how about this? If you really like a Ferrari, you really want one so bad, take a picture, put it on your wall, and be that be the first thing you see every day. And then when you wake up in the morning, when you do your shower, everything, close your eyes and picture yourself in that car every day. And I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow but you're going to be so focused on it. Okay. Maybe you don't get a Ferrari tomorrow. Maybe in three years you do when you're not even thinking about it because it's in the back of your mind playing. Perfect example. You ever driven on, on, a, on a highway before? Juan? You've driven on a highway and whatever. And you just think of a color or you think of a type of car. And then you'd notice that every car is that color. You start seeing that model car everywhere. It's like, it's almost following you. Why? Because our brain is like a, a heat seeking missile of what you focus on good and bad. If you say every day, my marriage is terrible, my health is terrible, I'm broke, life has a way of saying, your wish is my command, man. I guess it is. Well, if you wake up even when things are tough, you say, you know what, man, tomorrow's going to be better. I'm going to crush it tomorrow. Whatever it takes, I'm in 100%. I'm going to get that raise from my boss. Then you just said something about the, the oh, I, I've been asking for a raise. And I say to that person, okay, why should that person give you a raise? Just because you feel entitled to it? Like, what are you doing differently? Yeah, what are your it. habits? What, you deserve it. Okay, fine. And I would say, okay, what are some of the things that you're doing to change that narrative? Are you learning new skills? Are you putting the extra time at work? Are you getting into work early? Are you leaving late? Are you making it priority? The law of attraction doesn't work just by thinking things. It also takes action too. You also have to put that, that focus on something. If you really want to make your wife feel special, just saying it is not enough. You got to go out there and get her flowers. You got to show her that appreciation every day. You know, if you, I'd say to that person who wants that promotion, I say, okay, why don't you start going to work every day, 30 minutes early, start setting up your schedule for a week and be the last one to leave. I guarantee your boss will take notice. Start putting that extra effort and you'll start seeing the dividend from it. The problem is that people say, I want these things, but then sit home all day and watch Netflix. It doesn't work that way. 
You got to work too. I mean, it doesn't just think your way to wealth. You got to action your way to wealth. The saying goes, you know, uh, ask and you shall receive, not wine and you shall receive. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> that's that. Yeah, that's 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 totally true. Um, again, there's just there's you know this can be such a long conversation. Yeah, oh, sure, sure. <laughs> But I'm telling you, I've been through that. I've been through there of the lowest of the low. And I can't say, oh, just thinking about it got me there. But sacrificing, the sacrificing is what gets you there. It always makes you appreciate the, 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 the journey up. The journey is the, the fun part, guys. Sometimes the struggle is a victory. Whether you, whether you believe it or not, it is. Because you're getting closer to what you want. If you've ever played video games, it doesn't get easier the next level you go to. It gets harder. It never gets harder in a sense. Your skills just get better every single time. That works in life too. So, I mean, it's one or two things, guys. Either how bad do you want it or just throw your hands up and quit. And that's just the reality of it. So let me ask you another question. How much mm -hmm. time do you spend, let's say, like uh, on a daily basis or weekly basis, uh, reading, learning about the stock market, about options about trends about everything and your, minimum, in your industry in your industry minimum minimum five hours a day including weekends minimum so that's not that's the, what I, that's what that's not even during market hours that's five hours a day minimum per day during the including weekends if i don't have the wall street journal or bloomberg on my phone but i can't read something i'm behind my competitors i'm behind the curve i'm doing a, an actual disservice to my employees that are, that are depending on me and my clients who are depending on me. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, that's important. Now, to other people, oh, it's too much. Well, too much to you may not be enough for me. It's all perspective. Right. But yeah, again, it's something that I'm passionate about. Again, if I was passionate about reading cookbooks, different story. Gotta be reading that, but I'm not. So again, <laughs> it, it may feel like work for some people, but um, it really is, man. When you enjoy something, it don't feel like work, man. Mm -hmm. It don't. You just love it. But yeah, five hours a day minimum a day. Okay. Got to be there, on top of it. Are there, um, off the top of your head, are there any, any good uh, books, any good resources um, for somebody that's interested in, in, in learning how to trade stocks? Is there, I don't know, one or two or three books off the top of your head that you could say, listen, if you're thinking about doing this, you definitely want to consider this book, this book, and this book. You know, they, I would say set you like right on the right path. And it, you know, you're not going to become a gazillionaire overnight after reading the three books, but they'll yeah. set you on the right path. There's two books I would start off with just to get the basis of money right, which is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. Those are oh. two great books to set your foundation. Can't build a house without a good foundation. Now, with regards to day trading, uh, Peter Lynch has a great book on day trading with an edge. You can take a look at that. But with day trading, guys, it really is sink or swim. You're going to just have to get into it. Uh, the best thing would be to open a TD Ameritrade account, which is a demo account, paper, and you don't lose money. It's like Monopoly money. You start, tr you start playing around. You start trying your theories, and you're going to make mistakes, but that's okay. It's like shooting around a basketball in a basketball gym where no one's there. You know, you're going to do the crazy stuff there, shoot from half court. It doesn't matter. You're not in the game, but that's the way to train. That's the way to do it. Um, another great book, if you wanted to get in trading, Psychological, The Secret. And the Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Two great books. Those two good books have probably changed my life more, more than any other. And it has nothing to do with trading, but it does have your mentality of the foundation set to do this every day. Now, can everyone be a day trader? No, it's not easy because you will lose money. Today, for example, was a tough day for me trading. It was one, it was, today was literally the, hard, the hardest day trading in 2020. Today alone, right? What, what, are, what are the odds, right? Of all days. And the past four weeks, we have absolutely crushed it. But today was the hardest day. Now, what you do after adversity is what defines you. Not when good times are around. Pretty sure you've seen in 2008 with the mortgage meltdown, how many people were gurus in real estate? It was that easy, right? Buy and flip. Where are they now? Probably nowhere. It's the steady players that can handle the bear markets, the steady players that can handle the slowdowns. Those are the guys who build fortunes, that build empires, that do great things. Uh, not this fly by night guys who don't know what they're doing, but yeah, those are the books I recommend. And I, I, I actually highly recommend those books as well, actually to all my agents as well, all my real estate agents, 
I have a list of required books and all yeah. those books are definitely like must read books. Think and Grow Rich, Rich Man of Babylon, Rich Dad Poor Dad, The Compound Effect Dad. is fantastic. Um, yep. And it's absolutely, and, and, it, and what's amazing is that my agents also tell me, but one, they're not real estate books. Like I'm not, doesn't matter. and the thing is that you're right. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a mindset thing. And what I've experienced also for me, my own personal experience is that when I look at um, like a real estate, for example, I don't know if everybody, if everybody knows, but in real estate, there's literally uh, an 87% failure rate. Like people oh. get a real estate, yeah. people get a real estate license will quit in the next like within five years, if not sooner, because it doesn't work, right? Because real estate, probably much like, you know, trading stocks, it's, it's a 100% results business, right? Results based business, yep. That's it. So, you know, if we don't sell a house, we don't eat. And so a lot, of, so it's a mindset situation. That's where most people get messed up. And I think it also applies to, you know, to health, to, to fitness relationships, right? Like it's, like if you don't have it right in here, then you're, 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 what you do may work once, but then you'll just mess it up again. Like you'll, you'll, you'll sabotage yourself. Very no foundation time. in your home. It breaks down. No Correct. foundation. Yeah. One more book I would highly recommend to individuals is sure. Sun Tzu, The Art of War. <laughs> the Art of War is a great book because it'll give you the perspective of, I'm not saying have enemies, but even the adversity that you have, that's an enemy. Your laziness is an enemy. Totally. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, your kind of a lethargy or negative energy, that's an enemy. Know thy enemy, you know, that sort of thing. That's something people should read. I wish this was taught in school. It just isn't. And I understand, but I mean, it doesn't mean that you, uh, people out there can't pick up a good book. Let's say you're the type of person that doesn't like books. I can't sit down for two hours, Carlos, and read. Audiobooks are your friend. If you have a long commute, that is your time to learn. I have done so many audiobooks. I absolutely love it. I have a podcast myself. People say it's the greatest thing they listen to, but that's just them. You know, that's not a toot of my horn or anything. That's just, that's the record. That's the people talking about it. But um, I mean, podcasts are great. That's another way to read. Uh, audiobooks, guys, there's so much information. Right now with this COVID-19 going on, there is no excuse for you not to sharpen your skills in something. If you have time at home, this is your opportunity. For all the hours you watch Netflix entertaining yourself, that's not improving your life. That's not doing anything but stimulating the mind a little bit. Look down the line and see, man, I could get better, whether it's carpentry, whether it's arts and crafts, whether it's my money, whether it's selling something, whether it's cooking, my body, working out, something to improve yourself. Because at the end of the day, every day, your job as a person, individual, is how do I get better than the person yesterday? How do I get better than that? And those compound over time, like the compound effect, Darren Hardy. Totally. It's, I mean, it's so absolutely right. I've experienced it personally myself. It was funny. I was, uh, I was talking to my agents as well and even my son and, and I was telling them that, you know, this time, like sure, it, you know, if you have a job at home, right? Like if you're, if you're fortunate enough actually to be still employed and you're working from the house and you're collecting a paycheck and you and your, and your spouse uh, are still employed, then I understand that your time may be a little bit more limited. But for those people who are maybe laid off, furloughed, right? They're just kind of on a break temporarily for the next, whatever, four, six, eight weeks, whatever it may be. I don't think there will ever be a time in the near future where you, where, where you can literally press pause on the world spinning, right? Mm -hmm. Like getting, like literally stepping out of the rat race, right? For four to six to eight weeks, like you said, to sharpen your skills. If, and I, and I see it all the time because that's, that, that really is what I see makes the difference between the people that, that, that make progress and the people that, um, that tend to be on, on a, you know, on the They rest. stay stagnant. They stay stagnant. A hundred percent. So anyway, Carlos, listen, we can talk about this forever. Oh yeah. Gonna, Tell me about it. I know. Well, I think what we're going to have to do, what we're going to have to do is, is, um, I just got an idea, which maybe we're going to talk about later, but what we're probably going to have to do is some type of like, like Instagram live, Facebook live, something or sure. other, and we'll like promote it to all the like teenagers that are at home right now and, uh, and tell them what they need to actually be paying attention to and learning instead of, you know, struggling with, I hate geometry. <laughs> I hated geometry growing up too. So there you go. I yes. get it. Yes. The, you know, the ironic thing is that I think like you, what we were talking about earlier, I've spent more time, money and energy, 
like learning outside of school, outside of college than in college. I don't know about you. Same. Well, I was a college dropout. So absolutely. I learned way more in my, in my older years when I got out of college than anything else. When you study something that you're very passionate about, you're going to go all in. Now, let's say you're very passionate about astronomy. That's fine too. I have nothing against college if you are specialized in something. But if you're just getting a degree in just anything, just to get that piece of paper to make your parents happy, that doesn't do anything. And the student loans come behind it. That's a whole different conversation. But I would say, guys, find something you really want to do, something you really enjoy. I don't care who you are. There's something you like. Everyone has something they're passionate about. I don't want to hear. I don't like anything. No, you're just that, that, that mindset. But again, there's got to be something, whether it's auto mechanic, whether it's uh, carpentry, whether it's painting, something, find that thing that gets you out of bed. And I don't want to hear that Netflix gets me out of bed or video games get me out of bed. Okay, video games. Why don't you create a Twitch channel? You can monetize that, right? There's, with the internet, there's really no excuse anymore. You can reach the masses and really sell yourself or your product now. So there is no excuse now. If you don't want to, it's just you don't want to. And that makes sense. That's okay. I and that's it. right. And you said it right. If, if you don't want to, there's really not much. You know, yeah, there's nothing, nothing that. you could say. You know? I, and I think, another one too I recommend is if people want to learn a new language, this is the time to do it. Oh, God, you know, of course. Home, learn a language. Yeah, learn totally. a language. No, no, absolutely. And there's a, you know, there's, a, there's a great video on YouTube, which I can't remember the, the specific title of the, of, of, the video, of, the, of the video, but it's, it's a TED Talk. I think it's uh, Josh Kaufman, I think. And it's basically about learning anything in 20 hours and how what it takes, it takes about 20 hours on average to become good enough at something like 20 hours of actual focus practice to learn how to play the guitar decently, right? You're not going to be like Santana, right? No, you're not going to be a, a genius. That, that's a lifetime of work. But within 20 hours you, of like focus practice, you can learn social media, you can become conversational in a language, you can learn the, the basics of stock trading, like in, sure. in 20 hours of focus time. So anyway, this, again, I mean, there's just so many ways that... Um, yeah, we can get into this conversation as long as you want, but, I, but I actually have to be think, a part two next. I, I, yeah, that's it. for sure there's going to be a part two. But I think, <laughs> I think for a lot of people that, that hopefully watch this video who are maybe thinking about you know, the, the possibility, the money-making opportunities of stock trading, it's really ironic that we ended up not talking about stock trading because sure, that can be very technical, but it's, I, I, I don't know if you agree, it's probably 80, 90% mental. 80% behavior and psychology, 20% of actual technical knowledge. The easiest way I've taught individuals in the stock market is to, I always say the same thing, master yourself, master your emotions, you'll be the best at it. When you master that, you can accomplish anything. Aristotle said, that, I fear the man, not who can conquer uh, other country or other nations, I fear the man who can conquer thyself or himself. That's right. the quote you should be listening to. Right, yeah. That's yeah, the one. Bruce, yeah. I think uh, Bruce Lee had a great quote too. I think it was something along the lines of, you know, um, I don't fear the man that can do, you know, 10,000 kicks. Kicks once. Master the one. But the one who can, who has mastered the one kick 10,000 times. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, there's some great ones out there. Oh, you could tell who a reader is by all the quotes they say. I love right. it. I'm a big reader. I love it. <laughs> yes, yes, me too. Anyway, man, um, listen, we appreciate so much for taking the time oh, to speak you. with us, especially after Anytime. a rough market uh, day. Oh, what happens? You get used to it. Today. You get used to but, it. But... Um, how can people connect with you? How can they reach you? Uh, GAR Capital on Instagram, GAR Capital on YouTube, GAR Capital on Twitter, and on Facebook or everywhere, uh, maybe two everywhere. But uh, YouTube has some really great videos, guys. I do a ton of them, speaking about good stuff. Uh, if you want to take out that investment seminar, I'm not giving you stock tips. I'm just giving you a way to kind of navigate through the noise of the financial media and the media in general so you can start making smarter decisions with your money. I even have a free personal finance video on Udemy. If you want to take a look at it, it's uh, personal finance, what they don't teach you in school. It's on YouTube. It's absolutely free. Please check it out. I'm sure you guys would love it. Awesome. Sounds good. Brother, I hope you uh, and your family are healthy and safe. Continue to yes, be thank safe. thank you. And uh, guys, uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you guys found it valuable. I know for me, this, all these conversations are always invaluable. I actually, I think I enjoy them sometimes probably more than, uh, than oh, the Oh, I enjoyed it too. It was great. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I tend to have a, a very curious mind. So anyway, Carlos, thanks so much again. Hey, thank and, you, man. Uh, and we'll talk soon. Thank you, guys. Oh, it was great. Thank you, sir. Bye.